All right, my friends, so I am at my house in my basement, and uh, let's see, am I looking at you there? Yeah. I got my uh, electric bill the other day, and let me just tell you something. This makes me mad. I should have known better than this. Yes, this is financial planning related, because I'm going to show you how you can save big bucks. Am I looking at the right way? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to show you my electric bill. Let's see if I can't flip this over. Yep, there we go. And what you can see is right there, August. The number of watts, kilowatt hours right there. We used 95 in August. Last year we used 76. 95, 76. And there you go, 2,600 kilowatt hours for the month of August. You go down last year and we used 2,060. That does not make me happy at all, um, not in the least. And I'm gonna show you something, look at this. So here is your charges. So here's your kilowatt hours. So the first 500 kilowatt hours is basically seven and a half pennies for a kilowatt hour. Your second 500 kilowatt hours is seven point, roughly 7.4 cents. And next, 1600 kilowatt hours is 0.86 cents. So that's a pretty significant bump. That's about a 50, uh, 30, no, 15% or something like that bump. I don't like that because that's just wasted money. And I said, what is going on? Let me show you my thing again because it's going to be tough for you all to see. And I got my watermarks on here. But basically, obviously you can see, and this is in June, and, or I should say March, April, May, when we don't have the, uh, the electricity working. Here's when you got your, uh, um, use it, well, we use natural gas for heat, but still we have a lot of the fan that kicks on the heat and whatnot. So you can see pretty big bumps right there in terms of summertime and then a little bit in the wintertime or natural gas bill we use natural gas for heat and that goes that sucker gets pretty big in the, i guess december and january but we do insulate we have uh, multi-insulation i'm very cognizant of insulation i think it's r54 something like that we have up in the attic anyway so what's the culprit well let's take a look here my friends it's this guy that dehumidifier now in georgia it gets, it's very hot and humid, all right? So in Georgia, that humid, the humidity can really eat you alive. And so this is what's causing it, is a dehumidifier. Now, I like my dehumidifier. We lived in a house in New Jersey where the dehumidifier, where they didn't have a dehumidifier when we moved in there. And that sucker, man, it was bad in the basement. It was moldy and whatnot. And so, well, and they didn't know how to fix it. So all they did is put a dehumidifier in. So we got that guy. I'm going to show you something, though. Watch this. What is that's causing that? So if you come down here, this is called a kilowatt, all right? And so we're going to go down here, show you the kilowatt, because this is my, probably your favorite, uh, this is the best investment you can make, your best tool, all right? So a kilowatt, it shows you how many volts you're running. So right here, we're running 122 volts, U.S. outlet, 120 volts, but it also shows you how many kilowatt hours you've actually used, about, a, about two hours, and I've used already one kilowatt hour. So that doesn't seem like a big deal. It's 79, it's seven and a half cents, right? But watch this. How many watts is it taking? Look at that. 376 watts. 376. That's crazy. 376 watts that guy's taking. You times 376 by 24, and that's going to get your number of kilowatt hours you're using in a day. Then I don't even know what that is. 376 watts times 24 is, I don't know, off the top of my head is, is a lot. So think about it. If you have a 60 watt incandescent light bulb and you run that puppy all day long, 24 hours a day, that takes 1.4 kilowatt hours of electricity in any given 24 hour period. So that's, let's see, 60. So 370 watts is six, six times that? <laughs> so 1.4 kilowatt hours times six, that's like eight kilowatt hours a day just on this guy right here now i'm not saying don't use a dehumidifier i'm just saying do you really need to run it 24 7 especially if you haven't had any rain in the last couple of days so the answer is no i'm going to turn that puppy off because i have stunned at my electricity bill and i don't like wasting electricity so here's another thing you can do and i did another video on this before is you definitely want to get your incandescent light bulbs get them out of there so if you have lights above your garage let's see and above your um, your front door. So we had one, two, three, four fixtures above our garage. Each fixture has three lights. So that's incandescent light bulbs. That's 60 watts a piece, maybe 40, maybe 60. Certainly, hopefully not more than that. If you leave those puppies on at eight hours a day, and then you got the ones out front too, that's uh, four, that's 12. That's like 15 lights right there at 60 watts a pop at eight hours a day. And off the top of my head, I don't even know what it is, but that's another six, seven, eight kilowatt hours a day. 
So now you got eight kilowatt hours a day from this guy. You got eight, six or seven kilowatt hours a day from your lights. That's 15 kilowatt hours a day right there on just those two things. I'm going to show you again. Look, we use, where was it? 95 kilowatt hours a day. That's the wrong answer. That, that's, that's just a complete, well, that's just my basement. That's where all the kids play. That's a complete waste of money. Uh, so anyway, kick, keep your dehumidifier on when you need it for sure. Just watch those kilowatt hours. I'm telling you, they can sneak up on it, especially when you're sitting there thinking, oh, Josh, the kilowatt hour is only, well, you know, seven cents. Well, it's only seven cents for the first 500 kilowatt hours. It's going to be more than that once you start going above that, which it should. You user pays, man. That's the way it should be. You use more kilowatt hours, more IE electricity, you're going to pay more. And remember, this is electricity. This does not include natural gas. And so if you have a heating system like a heat pump that uses electric... Let me turn this guy off. I probably should just go ahead and turn that off while I was running there. If you have an electric uh, uh, heating system, your kilowatt hour is going to go through the roof because heat is the biggest component of electricity. Let me show you something, for instance, here. This fridge right here. That doesn't, that's not a very big use of electricity at all. You can plug that in on a 12 volt battery and you can run that puppy just off the, of your battery in your car. Now it does take, I think it takes 1100 kilowatt hours to start it when the, uh, um, the compressor in the back kicks in. But those things, these energy star uh, fridges now are not very expensive at all. This in terms of uh, electricity use, this right here, man, you do not want to run a microwave if you're trying to low heat for sure or, or low uh, any heating property you do not want to run if you can avoid it with your electrical bill because heating is a big 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 it takes up a lot of kilowatt hours to run a heating component for sure that's why i use a french press so if you have a coffee machine for instance and you use a french press remember french press you just put that puppy off the natural gas on your range you, you know let it let it uh, natural gas is cheap i love natural gas i'll never move to another house that doesn't have natural gas so now what you're doing is you got your French press, so you're boiling water. You got your uh, Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts or whatever you use at coffee grounds. Ground those puppies up. And I did a, a podcast with Nicole Sauce uh, from, where is she from? Living Free in Tennessee. Living Free in Tennessee is her podcast and her website. And she's a coffee, she sells coffee. It's wonderful. Friends, this is a continuation on how to save money. My, uh, my Wi-Fi kicked out when I was down in the basement and it's off for a couple months, up to a couple a couple minutes so i just want to give you the the wrap up here and i'll put these uh together so you can see it once and for all um so anyway a couple of things i had on my blog uh, heritagewealthplanning.com I uh, how to save money using getting rid of your incandescent light bulbs and then uh, turning them into the led lights you know the, like, that'd be a seven watt led light which replaces a 60 watt incandescent light bulb and uh, basically, I break it down. Actually, I'm using nine cents a kilowatt hour right now. It's seven point six seven. Uh, but anyway, you can look at that for for what it is. So here it is: ways to save money. I, and we also did uh, attic filtering. Like I said, we we did some uh, insulation up in the attic, whatnot. Um, it, it's just it's way. There's it, absolutely no reason not to save electricity uh, because it is money. Literally, well, not literally. In theory, out of your pocket. What's the other word? Not literally, uh, figuratively, figuratively out of your pocket. It, it don't do that because that's money you could use. I'm telling you right here. I'll show you a quick and easy on my blog how with just some energy consumption or uh, conservation, how you can save 100 bucks a month. All right, so we got uh, right here how to save 100 bucks a month, and that's one of my podcasts I did. I mean, that's real money. And think about it. if you have Medicare gap, Medigap premiums of say 100. $50 a month and I can give you a way to save a hundred dollars a month on your energy or your electricity excuse me again you gotta make sure we understand this is electricity this is not natural gas this is electricity but if I can get you to save a hundred dollars a month on your electricity well you just you know, reduced your Medigap premiums by 65 66 percent and it's not that hard to do. Just got to, again, incandescent light bulbs, get some insulation, use a French press. And I want to share with you uh, uh, Nicole's here. Uh, she's a she's where I go to for my coffee. Um, and this is Living Free in Tennessee. And you can get some of your uh, coffee that she does right there. And I, I can't remember the whole story, how she imports it, how she cooks and roasts and all that. But uh, I have a blog post. I'll post all these links to it. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Nicole. I like what she's doing. In fact, she... She edited my first book. Her and mom did, Lanny, Miss Lanny. Yeah, if I can. Yeah, this thing's just moving slowly today. And so Nicole runs a podcast. She's on episode 93. So if you're interested in, you know, homesteading, you know, creating a little bit more sustainable, uh, well, uh, not sustainable well so much, but if you're interested in creating more of a, uh, a self-sufficient lifestyle, 
Uh, Nicole's a good place to go with it for sure. Uh, so this is the book, and she edited that. Uh, her and her mom did, and so uh, so I'm a friend of hers for sure. But I'm also a client, so you should definitely look at her living free in Tennessee. Uh, but let's go back to what a French press does. I, I, it cut me off. So a French press is all you're doing is you're grounding up your your ground your coffee beans. All right, so your coffee beans are you can get them a whole lot cheaper than was already ground up for the most part. And you're grounding them up and you're putting them and then you're, you're heating some water. All right. Now you can heat the water on a range. You can heat the water on, you know, a piece of a couple sticks outside, whatever you want to do. But from a prepping possession perspective, you know, being prepared for like a hurricane coming through Hawaii right now. And, you know, natural gas is, is pretty fluid. So natural gas stays on a lot more than electricity does for sure. But even natural gas can go off sometime. And so how are you going to get your coffee? Well, you're certainly not going to use a heating element on a coffee machine. That's crazy. A, your electricity is out. B, if you're using a battery bank uh, to heat stuff, uh, just don't do that. And so he wants a French press because all you need to do is take ground beans, you ground them up, you put them in this, and it, you know, it can be an insulated, essentially plunger kind of material. So you're actually plunging it, and the coffee that comes out of that is just freaking awesome. I mean, it's just fantastic. It's fresh. It's wonderful. It's cheap. You can do it in emergencies. It's just a wonderful, wonderful mechanism to have your coffee. Uh, but it also saves a bunch of money. All right, so if you want to save money, get a French press because the grounds are cheaper. You don't have to spend a heating element for a heating up on a coffee machine. Um, uh, most coffee machines, they'll kick off, at least the Keurig I use. We use Keurig, too. So the Keurig I use will kick off once you're done. That's not that huge expense. But I'm mean, telling you, every little bit helps, especially if you're retired on a fixed income. Get a French press without question. And so Nicole has uh, the whole, if you listen to my podcast, she'll tell you how to make your best French press. <laughs> Because I was like, Nicole, what do I do? And it, it was fine. It was good. But she was, oh, I do this and that instead. So I'll put the link to the show notes on the podcast. So that's three ways right there to save money is make sure you get that. I left it downstairs. Get that kilowatt tool. I think it's like 10 bucks on Amazon. I'll put a link in the notes. One of these days, I'll be an Amazon affiliate where if I sell it, then you'll I'll get a commission. But I, I, I'm not right now. So anyway, go, to, go to Amazon.com. I'll put the link. Get the kilowatt. Probably want two or three of them. You want to plug it in anything that uses electricity. So here's this light bulb, and this is a, a four watt LED light. All right, so that's used. I don't keep it on that much, but just think about it. If you're running four watts, um, or is it five? I, let's just say five. Five times twenty four. So I'm using 120 watts if I ran that 24 seven. That's basically one tenth of a kilowatt hour for that guy. Now if I had a 60 watt incandescent light bulb. That's 1.4 kilowatt hours. You see the difference there? That's a significant difference. It's just, it's, it's just no debate. Now, an incandescent light bulb is cheaper indeed than an LED light, but LED lights, while they're a little bit more expensive on the front end, they're actually getting cheaper and cheaper as we go as well. So I'm a huge fan of LED lights for sure, especially in places where you leave the lights on quite a bit. Like I said, your front porch or something like that. All right, so that's one. Number two, understand what is taking electricity. Is it your heating elements on your dryer, for instance? The dryer is a big one. Anything that's heating, if it's an electricity run, it's, it's going to cost you. So if you can somehow get your natural gas to do your dryer, and I, I don't know how to do that. You'd have to get a plumber, I imagine, to come out and do that. I don't think an electrician would do that. Well, I don't know. But anyway, get a natural gas to do your dryer. That'd be wonderful in terms of your electricity cost. Yeah, I'm not saying go back in the old days like my mom used to do and have all your, your stuff out there on, on clothespins. I mean, that's not really realistic in this day and age. But actually, what you want to do, if you can dry your clothes at night, is preferable than doing it during the day. Uh, just as less demand. That's just all there's to it. Number three, another way. I'll give you another way. I do a lot of grilling, my friends, a lot of grilling. So when it's hot outside, like in Georgia, I don't want that oven on. I'd like to keep the oven off as much as I can. For one thing, two, one thing for first and foremost, the oven is run by electricity. So the le least I can use the oven, the more I'm going to save. Two, the heat that the oven sends into your uh, ambient temperature, that's a lot of heat. So all this he heated air is going out into your room, and that's going to make your air conditioning kick on more. So that's another waste right there. So you got the ovens taking up electricity, spreading a lot of heat that's spreading throughout your home. That's going to take your air conditioning on some more. So you know what you do? You do a lot of grilling. Absolutely. So I got three, not one, not two, but three of those blue rhinos, five gallon things. And I use them all the time because I'm probably out there grilling four or five times a week. And my kids love the, the food being grilled. I love the food. And you're taking that heat that you were otherwise using inside your house and you're putting outside. 
And because of that, you're not using electricity on your oven. You're not using the air condition because of the heat going into your ambient temperature. And you're also getting better taste of food, in my opinion. Now, we still use the oven on occasion, but not that much. So you want to think about that. Ways to reduce electricity, just common sense thing. Try to go outside and do a grill. Uh, do not use your electricity, uh, and particularly during like five to eight or something like that is, a, is the biggest demand. So dry your clothes in the early morning or the late, late night. Absolutely. If you can, if you can pay somebody to come in there, fix your dryer up to a natural gas, man, that's a wonderful, wonderful mechanism to do that for sure. If you got a heat pump, you're going to have to pay for electricity. There's no getting around that. And the heat pumps are generally better in a more uh, moderate climb. So a heat pump in Georgia probably works pretty well. Um, but again, if you have electricity running, anything that's heated, you're going to have a bigger electrical bill for sure. And so then try to be best to cook outside as much as you possibly can. See, I cook outside in the wintertime as well. I, I mean, it'll be, you know, freezing 28,000 below zero. And I'm out there with some ribs. Oh, man. I don't care. I love it. It just tastes better. It's cheaper. It's easier to do. It takes a burden on my wife from half to cook stuff. And man, I just love it. I can be out there and just, oh, I can do that all day long. So, like I said, when I said retirement planning, when they were saying, you're only going to spend $500 a month on food, not me. I like food. It tastes good. <laughs> and I like to eat. So anyway, hope this helps. I'll put these links on the blog, on the post here, and I'll put this whole show notes on the blog at heritagewealthplanning.com. So if you like what we talk about and ways to save money, click on the uh, subscribe button, please. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments. I was talking to a guy, Corey, uh, put a note on here on my YouTube channel about using an 80-volt uh, electric mower versus a 40 volt. And so it was interesting having a discussion with old Corey. So if you have thoughts and, and you know, concerns or whatever, or comments, I should say about ways to save money, man, put them out there. Cause I don't know everything. You don't know everything, but you know, combined, we can probably get a pretty good gauge of some simple ways to save money. And again, even if it's only a hundred bucks a month, that could be your Medigap premium right there, my friend. So Heritage Wealth Planning is a blog and we'll see you next time on the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel. Thanks now.